So let us pretend that I've got some numbers and I'll, I'll put them on this side. So let's say over here I've got direct materials, direct labor, variable overhead, fixed overhead. Absorption and direct. Okay. Let's say I've got $2 of direct materials. I've got $1.25 of direct labor. I've got 75 cents of variable overhead and I have $1.20 of fixed overhead. This is for absorption purposes. Now, where did this fixed overhead come from? Let's pretend that my fixed overhead is $120,000 a year. Maybe it's rent. Now, I am going to manufacture 100,000 units. That equals $1.20 a unit. So, that is how much per unit is fixed overhead. Okay, now under absorption costing, it's called absorption because whatever doesn't get sold, that part of the overhead will get absorbed into ending inventory. It doesn't get expensed, it gets absorbed in ending inventory. So that's what's going to happen. Now, under direct, direct material is still the same, that gets put into ending inventory. Direct labor, that's going to get put into ending inventory. Variable overhead, that's going to get put into ending inventory. But the question is, what is an inventoryable cost? Well, of the fixed overhead, under direct variable prime, we're only going to capitalize the variable cost. What are variable? Materials variable, labor variable, variable overhead is variable. What about fixed overhead? Fixed is a sunk cost. So as far as direct prime contribution are here, what they're going to do here is they're going to expense all $120,000. All $120,000 gets expensed. So over here, how much gets inventoried? None of it. So when I talk about how much is my inventoryable cost per unit, this would be $2, $3, $25, $4, $5, $20. This is two, three, four dollars. The difference is what? The dollar twenty that here got absorbed into ending, here got expensed. Let's say, for example, that my production was a hundred thousand units, but my sales were only eighty thousand units. That means ending inventory is going to go up by twenty thousand units. Everybody see that? So that's what's going to happen. Ending inventory is going to go up. Now, what happens is, if I sold 80,000 units, what's going to happen under absorption? What does GAP say? GAP says your costs are going to be 80 at $1.20 is $96,000. So over here, I'm going to expense fixed cost of goods sold is going to be $96,000. Here, it's going to be what? $120,000. Notice. What is the difference between 96 and 120? Well, I'll show you an easier way to figure this out. What's the difference between what I produced and what I sold? Ending inventory went up by $20,000, or 20,000 units. 20,000 units at $1.20 a unit is $24,000. I bet you that is the difference in this. What's 120 minus 24? 96. So the profit difference between these two is going to be what? The 20,000 units in ending times the $1.20 of your fixed overhead, which is $24,000. That's going to be the difference in the profit between these two methods. Why? Because under GAAP, you can't expense it till you sell it. So I spent $120,000 on rent, but I need to allocate that at $1.20 a unit times the units sold and the units in ending. The stuff I sold was 80,000, the stuff in ending is 20,000, so the 20,000 times 120 gets absorbed in ending. Under direct variable prime, they go, I don't really care about this. Why? Because the fixed cost is sunk. I don't care, expense it. So here, they're going to expense what? All 120 under fixed manufacturing. That's why I called them different. I call this fixed manufacturing cost and I call this fixed cost of goods sold. Because this is still based on 80,000 units. This is based on all 100 because it's a sunk cost. It's gone. It's done. It's history. It is his. It is his. It is history. So that's what we're basically saying. That's the difference.